time that we're you know about six nine months away from uh, from RTM. I'm just wondering what you see as the big themes or moving forward, where you see the next big challenges that we've got to deal with for uh, you know V2 and beyond. Yeah. What does your five year radar look like? I think there are on a couple of levels. One is um, um, how in what ways to evolve the desktop mm -hmm. uh, with respect to desktop window manager stuff. You know, we've invested a lot up until this point in getting um, getting the composited desktop to be a reality. And there's a huge amount of application compatibility work that has to do, happen to make that occur. And, and we're still seeing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's also just the, the mechanics of getting GDI to render off screen, getting DirectX to render off screen, bringing it all together. And, you know, we, we've got. We, benefited from the fruits of that to some extent because we've got this composited system and it's, it's great and we've we've exploited a few areas of interest from that like flip 3d and hover thumbnails and uh, alt tab changes in the glass and whatnot but there's a lot more that we can do right. and I think one, once now that we have this sort of infrastructure of the um, underlying composite desktop we can really open that up and do a lot mm -hmm. more uh, you know a lot of really interesting stuff beyond what we interesting stuff that we've done thus far. Right. Um, so that's one area. Another area is the um, uh, web integration scenarios for WPF, mm -hmm. I think, and, and really generating content on the server machine, um, on, on web servers, and since pulling it down to, uh, to client machines, and really being able to take advantage of a rich client on the, on the client machine. Mm -hmm. um, really finding the right paradigms for that, that leverage the, the best of the server world and ASP.NET, Atlas, mm -hmm. all that, mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction with the you know good stuff that lives on the client, and yeah. really being able to mm -hmm. apply, apply that. I think there's a lot of great challenges there. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Um, yeah, and then the third one is some of the stuff that we talked about about potentially exposing the core uh -huh. um, and what can be done. Be done with that. Right. So, but so, so just as a general question about about private, I mean, for some reason, I mean, clearly, core system components of Windows we keep them private for obvious reasons. Um, what is what's the case with like what would make Mill Core publicly accessible? In other words, what kind of changes would you make? Is it really an issue of documentation? An issue of explaining what the methods, the classes, that stuff. Use that, but I think the first step would be a sort of thorough API review and cleanup. The API is not at all structured for public consumption, okay. um, which has to include versionability, um, uh, standard calling mechanisms, and ref counting mechanisms, and such. Uh, just anything that you know, if something that. To show on MSDN, we'd be proud of showing, yeah. right? It doesn't mean we built the wrong thing for what we've done now for a private sure. API because it's a very tightly controlled environment that is being used there. But there's a lot to do to sort of make that publicly accessible, and a set of um, uh, a set of applications that prove to us that we put the right things in there, and that not everyone has to replicate the exact same boilerplate for every one of their applications which can just get out of hand quickly. Sure. Understood. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good explanation of the difference between a private and public API. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Fantastic. Greg, it's been just awesome yeah. chatting with you. Yeah. It's uh, you. not often we get a chance to do this, so uh, thank you for, right. for your time. And uh, yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Look forward to it again in the future. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you.